Top 10 Dark Friend Secrets That Only Matthew Perry Knew Number 10, Jennifer Aniston Nearly Quit Jennifer was the last assigned for the final 10th season of Friends, and she very nearly didn't return at all. Part of this was down to her busy career because at this point, she was definitely one of the most famous of the Friends cast. She had several movies on the slate. She later revealed that she was debating not coming back because she had a couple of issues that she was dealing with at the time. Jennifer said that she wanted to end the show when people still loved them and they were on a high. She also questioned herself about how long she really wanted to play Rachel. Jennifer obviously eventually agreed to the final season, but she is the reason why it's the shortest season, because she only agreed to return if it was cut short. Luckily for everyone, she decided to stay and felt bittersweet about the final season, and in the end she found herself wishing that it could have continued on. Most of the cast members' careers have crashed and burned after Friends ended, but Jennifer Aniston was a rare exception. She went on to star in several Hollywood blockbusters like Bruce Almighty, Breakup, Marley and Me, Just Go With It, Horrible Bosses, and Where the Millers, all of which were very successful at the box office. Number 9, Matthew Struggled With Substances As we know, Matthew Perry's sudden death has completely shocked the world. The beloved actor was found at his home after an apparent drowning. He was only 54 years old, and his passing was an absolute tragedy. Many of the friends' cast struggled to deal with their newfound fame, and for Matthew, this led to problems with addiction, which he has been extremely open about in his memoir. Although he said that he was never drunk on set, he did admit to being painfully hungover to the point that everyone became aware of it. After more than one stint in rehab, he managed to get clean, and then he became very passionate about helping other people who were struggling. Just last year, he revealed that he and Jennifer Aniston had stayed in each other's lives, and they remained in close contact. He said that it was actually Jennifer who confronted him first about his addictions during the filming of the show. Apparently, she approached him during a break and told him, we know you're drinking. And looking back on that moment, Matthew thought that it was very scary, because in his own mind, he thought he was doing a perfectly fine job of hiding his habits from his co-stars. At a certain point, they all knew that he was in trouble, and they did their best to support him. Number 8, Lisa Kudrow sued the show. Lisa Kudrow's manager Scott Howard sued her in 2008, a year after she ended her contract with him, and four years after Friends ended. Howard claimed that Lisa owed him residuals for the reruns of Friends and other projects that she had worked on while under his management, to the tune of 10% of everything that she got. He stopped paying him when the contract was dissolved and argued that the 10% was only payable when he was managing her. Eventually, he won the case in 2014, and the judge awarded him $1.6 million. Of course, for someone who earned $1 million per episode for the final seasons of Friends, that figure wouldn't have put too much of a dent in her bank account. In a statement, Elisa's attorney said, the jury's verdict is merely one step in the legal process. This case will ultimately be resolved at the appellate level. Mrs. Kudrow has faith in the judicial system, and she believes that the eventual outcome of this contractual dispute will be in her favor. In a statement of his own, Scott Howard's attorney said, what generally happens now with unsophisticated actress clients is they overpay for filing a frivolous appeal that has no chance for success. So this legal battle got extremely messy in the end and it must have been embarrassing to be a part of. Number 7, David Schwimmer went into hiding. As we know, David struggled with the fame that came from being such a huge hit at such a young age. Of the main six actors and friends, he's the one who has shied away from the limelight the most. Although he continued to work after the show ended, he spent many years preferring to do voice work, directing, producing, and has been candid about struggling to find a way to continue acting as he's such a huge celebrity. He said, it was pretty jarring and it messed with my relationships with other people in a way that took years. I need to kind of adjust to and become comfortable. It made me want to hide under a baseball cap and not be seen. So I was trying to figure out how do I be an actor in this new world, in this new situation. Friends was such a huge hit from the moment it premiered that it didn't just bring fame to its stars, it brought a mega level of fame that is hard to understand. For David, it was just too hard to deal with. So much so that it didn't just affect him, but his relationships and other people as well. He was also an actor who, as a part of his craft, liked to be anonymous and observe people out in the world. But of course, he simply could not do that anymore once he reached that certain level of success. Number 6, Matt LeBlanc was arrested. Before he became famous, Matt was already getting used to that crazy party lifestyle that most people associate with being a celebrity. After friends was finished, he admitted that he was arrested for drunk driving twice. He 
said, when I was young and stupid, I wasn't driving fast, just crooked. This came up when he was cast as one of the hosts of the new Top Gear, and fans were not sure whether a history of reckless driving was a good thing when it came to presenting a show about cars. Matt dismissed the incidents as the product of his age, although he has said that he's grateful the press never got a hold of his mugshots. While his drunk driving record happened before fame and fortune came to him, he also got into some pretty dark times when it came to dealing with his newfound fame. He nearly had a nervous breakdown due to the intensity of working on Friends, especially when the show came to an end. Speaking about that time, Matt said that for years and years he barely left the house because he was so burnt out. He wanted not to have a schedule and not to have to be anywhere. Luckily, he was in a position financially to be able to do that with all of his savings, but of course his agent was not too happy. Matt said that was a very dark time for him and it even led to a nervous breakdown. Number 5 Jennifer Aniston's Wedding While not every cast is close off screen, the cast of Friends was known for being friends in real life, as well as having a huddle before each episode started filming and negotiating their salaries as a team. The cast were often photographed out and about together and they talked in interviews about how close they remained, even after the filming ended. I mean, Jennifer Aniston is even godmother to Courtney Cox's daughter. But in 2015, when she married Justin Theroux, she didn't invite any of her male co-stars to the ceremony. It was a small wedding with only 70 guests, but it did include Courtney and Lisa. Matthew Perry said that he was surprised he wasn't invited, but he was still very happy for the couple, despite the awkwardness of rejection. Hopefully though, he didn't take too much offense, considering that Jennifer didn't even invite her own mother to her wedding with Brad Pitt in 2000. In an interview with Ellen in 2018, she opened up about why she went years without talking to her mother Nancy Dow, saying, quote, she was critical, she was very critical of me. Because she was a model, she was beautiful, magnificent, I wasn't, I never was. She added that her mother was very unforgiving and would often hold long grudges. They ended up reuniting several years later, and by Jen's marriage to her second husband Justin in 2015, they were finally on speaking terms. But the funny thing is, Nancy still wasn't invited to that wedding either. Number 4. David's Neighbors Hated Him Even stars have feuds with their neighbors and David Schwimmer is no exception. In 2010, the star bought a property in the East Village, townhouse from 1852, and of course the land that it stood on. But he decided that rather than renovate it to keep up the facade, he would just tear the whole thing down and start fresh. It's something that a lot of property developers are known for doing, but it's never really a popular decision. As a result, an anonymous neighbor left a message for him that was too big to ignore. For some reason, they decided it would really upset him if they spray painted in huge letters on the construction site fence. They wrote the words, Ross is not cool, which is both hilarious and kind of genius because it actually echoed a storyline from the show, where Ross moves into a new building and becomes enemies with the neighbors by not chipping in for the maintenance man's retirement gift, which kind of goes to show you that life really does imitate art. There's no saying how David reacted to this, but you can imagine that he wouldn't be too pleased that the construction site had graffiti. Matthew's extreme anxiety. Matthew Perry admitted two years ago that he suffered from anxiety, which often came when he was trying to be as funny as he could in front of the live studio audience while they were filming Friends. The admission came up during the HBO Max Friends reunion with Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, and David Schwimmer. Matthew said that trying to be great made him extremely nervous, and his co-stars at the reunion said they never had any idea that he was suffering on set because he always delivered such a fabulous performance while being seemingly at ease. He said to me, I felt like I was going to die if they didn't laugh. And it's not healthy for sure, but I would sometimes say a line and they wouldn't laugh and I would sweat and just go into convulsions if I didn't get the laugh I was supposed to get. I would freak out. His co-star Lisa was shocked to hear that. She said that Matthew was always such a cool cucumber and he was one of the best on set, always delivering a line well as he played Chandler. Even though he never said anything to his co-stars back then, he felt this way every single night. And as we know now, his time on Friends was significantly impacted by his addiction. Memoir Controversy One surprise takeaway from Matthew Perry's autobiography was his apparent feelings towards Keanu Reeves, after he repeatedly questioned why other actors die while Keanu is still alive. Quote, why is it that original thinkers like River Phoenix and Heath Ledger die, but Keanu Reeves still walks among us? Upon learning that another former co-star Chris Farley had died, he wrote, 
I punched a hole through Jennifer Aniston's dressing room wall when I found out. And in the next line, he wrote, Keanu Reeves still walks among us. Matthew would later apologize for the comments and then release a statement saying, I'm actually a big fan of Keanu. I just chose a random name, my mistake. I apologize. But that wasn't it at all. There was also a lot of other interesting admissions in his memoir. Another thing he also revealed is that he asked out Jennifer Aniston before filming Friends. He said that the two of them were the only Friends stars who knew each other before the show, having met three years before through mutual acquaintances. In one part of the book, he wrote, I was immediately taken by her. How could I not be? And liked her. I got the sense that she was intrigued too, and maybe it was going to be something. Safe to say that fans were more than shocked by that revelation. And number one, everyone was scared of Matt LeBlanc. Now, Joey is far from a scary guy, but when Matt LeBlanc was first cast in the role, some of the other cast members were a little bit afraid of him. This fear was based off of what they knew about Matt himself. The fact that he was raised by a mechanic and had done a stint as a male model as well, and had done a stint and had done a stint as a male model, as well as what they knew about the character of Joey, who was known as a very forward womanizer. Jennifer Aniston in particular remembers being intimidated before she met him herself. She said, I was scared of that type of guy. He thinks it's very funny now, and actually he can sit down and comfort me just like Courtney or Lisa could. So it's a good thing that Matt turned out to be just as much of a sweetheart as Joey was, despite a slightly rocky start. Well, that's everything that we have for this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next one.